Hello everyone, it's Juliet here at Spoilt Rotten Beads and I'm really excited to be able to bring you a lovely design from the French designer Puka today. He uses a brand new bead called the Samos Parpuka bead, which is exclusive to us in the, in the UK, exclusive to Spoilt Rotten Beads in the UK at the moment. And it's an absolutely stunning pattern to make this beautiful Soraya bracelet um, that I am holding here. It's really gorgeous. Um, I'll bring that up to the camera so you guys can take a look it's really opulent looking and you're making these gorgeous little units which you can use to make this bracelet but you can also just make one on its own it makes a really lovely earring they'd also make a lovely pendant I mean so you know, they definitely make a lovely pendant as well so there's a lot you can do with this design this design it uses the new Samos Parpuka bead which is this lovely oval shaped bead in the middle here it's got a lovely rounded top to it um, they're a very satisfying shape and really really pretty and then we're also embellishing them with the minos parpuka beads as well and it's all made around these lovely little 20 millimeter bead frames so um, you'll find everything that you need to make your bracelet and a free pattern for you to download over on our website, www.spoiltrottenbeads.co.uk. And if you are watching this video from outside of the United Kingdom, then don't worry because we do ship to you all over the world. So to make the beautiful beaded elements in this lovely Soraya pattern by Puka, you are going to need the following. You will need some Samos Par Puka beads. You will need some size 11 Delica beads, some Minos Par Puka beads, some size 15 seed beads, and also some 20 millimeter square bead frames and you can find all of this over on our website www. I think I did too many w's there didn't I www.spoiltrottenbeads.co.uk so head on over there where you'll be able to pick up all of the supplies to make these beautiful elements and as I said earlier um, they join up beautifully to make necklaces and bracelets but you can also just use them on their own as focal points for a pendant or also for earrings as well okay so i'm now going to show you how to get started so the first thing you need to do is to thread your needle up with the longest length of fire line or beading thread that you are happy working with and to begin with we're just going to be using the samos parpuka beads and the size 15 seed beads and the Samos Parpuka beads, if you take a look at them, you'll see that they are domed on one side and flat on the other side. So we're going to call the domed side will be the front of the bead. And when you thread on your beads in a moment, you do need to make sure that you're threading them all on the same way so that they all face the same way, so that they're all facing upwards at the same time. So I'm going to start off by threading on a Samos bead. Then a size 15 seed bead, Samos bead, size 15 seed bead, Samos bead, size 15 seed bead, Samos bead, and finally another size 15 seed bead, like so. Let's bring that into the centre there so you guys can take a look. I'm going to take that down towards the end of my thread and make sure that all my beads are the right way up, which they are. And I'm now just gonna knot my thread around in a circle. So I'm just tying a knot here in my thread to bring those beads around so that they sit in a little circle like that. And then now going to tie a double knot here. So make sure that this is really nice and secure. So I'm just tying a double knot like so and pull it tight and there we go and now what i can do is pull that knot inside that next samos bead there so by threading through that samos bead i can pull the knot inside it and there we go and now what i'm going to do is i am going to go through the next size 15 seed bead in the circle. So I'm just going through that size 15 now in between two of my Samos Parpuka beads. 
<clears throat> and now I'm going to pick up two more size 15 seed beads and go through the next hole in the next Samos bead. And now pick up two more of my size 15s. And now I'm just going to go through that size 15 that's sitting between those next two Samos beads. Like so. And I'm just going to continue all the way around my piece um, until I have gone all the way around and I'm going to finish up by exiting from this Samos bead here. So I'm going to come right back to you when I've done that. So I've just threaded on my last two size 15s in this round and I'm now going to go through this 15 and then the first two 15s and the Samos bead from this round. So if I turn my work over I'll find it easier to get through those tiny little size 15s. There we go. You might be able to hear our printer beeping in a moment because we've got a printer going on in this room so sometimes it beeps at me while I'm beading. So if you hear something in the background then that will be what it is. I'm just going through that Samos bead now like so. And then we're ready to start adding in our minnow speeds now. There's a printer beeping at me. Okay, so I'm now going to pick up two size 15 seed beads, a minnow parpuka bead, and two more size 15 seed beads. Drop those down to my work, and you guessed it, I'm just going to go through that next Samos bead there. They're a really satisfying shape, these Samos beads. They're kind of lovely and round, a little bit egg-shaped. Very, very pretty. Um, so you can see what I'm going to do now is I'm going to continue around my circle doing the same thing. Two 15s, a Minos bead, two more 15s, and then back through the next Samos bead. Like so. So I'm just going to continue beading around my circle now and come back to you when I've got to the other side there. Okay, so I've gone all the way around the piece now and added in those Minos beads and it's already starting to look really pretty, I think. Now what you want to do is step through the first two size 15s here on that last round. So I'm just going through those two size 15 seed beads there just before that first Minos bead. Pulling everything tight. And now what we're gonna do is add in a row of five size 15 seed beads, which will sit over the top of the Minos bead. So that's one, two, three, four, five. So that's five size 15 seed beads there. Take them down to my work. And then I'm gonna go through these two size 15 seed beads the Samos bead and two more size 15 seed beads and pull this tight and you see how those size 15 seed beads those five size 15s now sit around that Minos bead so again I'm going to go around the circle and do exactly the same thing and come back to you when I have completed that okay so I've beaded all around my square now and I'm ready to actually attach the beaded piece to the frame. So what I'm going to do now is just trim off the tail that I left right at the beginning because otherwise that will start to get in the way. I'm exiting from this Samos bead here and I am going to stitch up through one, two, three, four, five, five size 15 seed beads. So I'm going to be exiting from the central size 15 seed bead that's right on the top of that Minos there. So I'm stitching through five size 15 seed beads now. That's three, four, five. I'll let you guys take a look at that. So I'm now exiting from the fifth size 15 seed bead that sits right on the top 
of that Minos bead there. And now if I add the piece to the frame, what I'm gonna do is pick up a size 15 seed bead, I'm gonna take that down. So there's my new size 15 seed bead sitting just inside the frame there. I'm gonna pass my needle underneath the frame and then back through that size 15 C bead that I've just added. So if I let you guys look as that tightens up, you see we've got a nice loop there sitting on the bead frame that's gonna attach our beadwork to this frame. And what I'm gonna do now is stitch back through that central size 15 that I started with at the beginning of this step and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side here so I'm now going to pick up another size 15 C bead take that down to my work pass my needle underneath the frame and then back through that size 15 C bead that I just added. And that is how you attach your work to the frame. I pull it tight now. And I'm just gonna take this up to my to the camera. You guys can hopefully see the loops around the frame there. So now what I'm gonna do is gonna do that on the other three corners. So what I'm gonna to do to, to, to get to the right corner is I'm just gonna stitch through the size 15 C bead, Samos bead, and all five of these size 15 C beads here and do exactly the same thing on the um, all three of the other corners. And then my piece will be securely attached into my frame and then we'll be able to finish it off by embellishing it with the brick stitch around the outside of the frame. Okay, so I've gone all the way around my piece and attached my beadwork to my frame. I'm exiting from this central size 15 seed bead here. And I'm just gonna stitch up through the first one here that is attaching the work to the frame. So I'm just going through, I'm just get my needle in the right position and then let you guys see what I'm doing. So I'm just going through that seed bead that is attaching the work to the frame there. And we're now ready to begin brick stitching. And this really finishes the piece off nicely because it just frames it beautifully. So to brick stitch, this is where we're going to be using our Delica beads. I'll bring my Delica beads in there. So exiting from that size 15 seed bead that sits on the edge of my work, I've picked up two size 11 Delica beads, stitch underneath the frame and then go back up through that second Delica bead that you just added. And you'll see as I pull this tight now, the beads will sit on the edge of the frame like so. If I take this up so you guys can see, you can see that the second bead is sitting nice and flat against the edge of the frame. The first bead is slightly on its edge. Don't worry about that because when we get around to the other side of the frame, as we add the last bead on, we'll neaten that up. So don't worry about that for the time being. And now I'm gonna continue adding the brick stitch around the bead frame. So I'm picking up another Delica bead, take it down to my frame, go underneath my frame, and back up through that same Delica bead. And pull it tight and it will sit nice and neatly on the edge of the frame. Just do that one more time for you. Pick up my Delica bead, take it down to my frame, go under my frame and then back up through that last Delica bead and pull tight and it will sit nice and flat on the edge of the frame like so. So I'm going to continue all the way around until I'm ready to add my last bead and I'll just show you how to finish this off then. 
Okay, so I've gone all the way around my piece now and this bead here is my last Delica and that's my first one that I've added on. You see how it's the first one there is still sitting ever so slightly on its side and I'm coming out of the last Delica bead that I added. So all I'm going to do now is stitch down through the first Delica bead and then back underneath my frame and back up through that same Delica bead but from the other side and that will hold it in place and if I show you my work now you see how it's sitting all those beads are sitting nice and square a little tip with brick stitching around an element like this is don't try and cram too many beads in if when you get to your last bead you're unsure about whether you can fit another bead in you probably can't so don't try and squeeze it in because if you do try and squeeze all the beads in you'll just push the beads up against one another and you'll cause the design to sort of throw off and instead of looking nice and neat like this it will all start to look a little bit skew with so don't be tempted to try and squeeze all the an extra bead in now to join these elements up together we're going to use some of these lovely minos parpuka beads so what you need to do is stitch through your beadwork so that you're exiting the third um the third delica bead along your row so i'm just going to go under through here underneath and then up again and that bead there will be my third bead in the row there there we go so i'm now exiting my third bead along i'm going to pick up a minos parpuka bead and then get my next element and line it up so that I'm going through, it'd be easier if I do, for me if I do this round this way, um, so that I go through the third bead along in this element as well. This won't be exact, so you might need to play around a little bit with the spacing, so you can always unstitch it if it's not looking right, but you can see how I can join these up by going through that element like that. And what I want to do though is add a little bit of strength to this, so I'm not going to leave it like that. I'm going to go underneath here. And then I'm going to go back through that minnow speed again. And back through the Delica on this side. Underneath again. And then finally back up through that Delica one more time. If it gets a bit tight, you might feel that you need to switch down to a smaller needle. Don't be afraid to do that because there's nothing more frustrating than shattering a bead at this stage in your work. Go back through that Minos bead and through the Delica on the other piece there. Let you guys take a look at that. So that is my Minos bead there sitting in between. I think I went out of shot there for a moment. Sitting in between my two pieces. And I'm just going to do the same thing a little bit further down. So I'm going to stitch through my Delica beads. I'm not worrying about the frame here. I'm just stitching through just the Delica beads so that I'm going to be exiting again that third Delica bead down from the top so there I am I'm exiting from that third Delica bead down from the top I can now pick up another Minos bead and go through the Delica bead on the opposite side. Like so. 
So there you go. So again, I'm gonna repeat that just by adding some strength into this little loop here. And then I will finish this thread on off and I will continue on um, joining up my elements together to make my beautiful bracelet. And I'm going to use with um, my bracelet, one of these slide bar clasps here. And um, I'm going to do a little strip of peyote to attach my clasp and we actually show you how to do this in another of our videos so if you'd like to use one of these slide bar clasps and make a little strip of peyote to attach your clasp then take a look at our video on this either on our website or our YouTube channel and then you can learn how to do this for yourself but I think with Puka's um, piece what she uses is um, is a different clasp it's a clasp with three rings and she just uses a little loop of the size um, the size 15 seed beads which is really nice and easy so you can you can do that as well if you want to but a triple or a two strand clasp would work well on this piece here okay so there is my beautiful finished bracelet I'm so pleased with this how it's turned out I think it's gorgeous really opulent looking I do like the little strip of peyote here um, that I've used to attach the clasp as I say you'll find a video on our website and our YouTube channel showing you how to do that so I've just used six um, for my bracelet. I've made mine quite small. Um, I think that Puka recommends for an 18 centimeter long bracelet, you use a total of seven units, but six was just right for me. I think seven was gonna be a little bit big for my wrist. So there you go. Please do um, let us know how you get on and give us your comments below and share your makes with us over on our Facebook page. And don't forget to head over to our website to download your free pattern. Thanks for, thanks for watching guys. Bye bye.